I love watching Blues hockey. Sometimes I forget the incredible level of skill it takes to play this game. The dynamic movements of these skaters would not be possible without the interaction of bones, ligaments, cartilage, and muscle in one of the most stressed joints in the body, the knee. Well, a knee uh, is an amazing joint in the body. It basically is a high-tech hinge that allows the lower extremity to bend, to flex, to rotate, to ambulate, to run, which is as a basic human function. To understand how knees work and how they withstand the incredible forces hockey puts upon them, let's take a look inside this hard-working joint with an orthopedic surgeon. The knee is a uh, combination of three bones. You have your femur, which is connected to your hip, and you have your tibia, which is connected to your ankle, and then you have the patella in the front of the knee. And on the end of each bone, you have cartilage, and cartilage is the cushion uh, for the joints. What keeps those big bones in place? Uh, again, ligaments connect bones to bones uh, that will stabilize the knee. There's two in the center of the knee. One is the ACL, and the other one is the PCL. The outside ligament is the lateral collateral ligament, or the LCL, and the inside ligament is the MCL. And an MCL is very important in hockey because when the skater is pushing off the ice, the MCL is providing a lot of stability against that stress that they're generating, pushing and edging into the ice. Okay, so the MCL provides stability for the knee, but these big hits put a lot of force on that little ligament. The MCL injury is a very interesting situation because normally the knee doesn't move much side to side. But when there's a high energy force, for example, getting thrust into the boards, the knee is forced to move quite a far distance in a very abnormal direction. The ligament is what ultimately fails. This is not just a low energy uh, impact, but it is a very high energy equivalent to getting hit by a car moving at 10 or 20 miles an hour. Torque sounds wicked. Is that the most common force that damages knees? The anterior cruciate ligament, or the ACL, is torn about 20 times more commonly than the posterior cruciate ligament. And it typically occurs when there is a twisting rotational force to the lower extremity when the foot is planted. So in a hockey player, if the skate is planted and he's hit from an opposing player and he twists and torques while weight bearing, that will often cause an injury to the ACL. Even if we aren't playing hockey, we put a lot of force on our knees. When you load the joint, there is not just the body weight that you have, it actually, the muscles are firing and the, we call it ground reaction forces are also participating in that load. And it can be upwards of three times your body weight between the femur and the tibia, and it can be upwards of six times your body weight between the kneecap and the femur. So if you are a 100 pound person and you go to jump or start to run, that can be up to 600 pounds of pressure across your kneecap. And if you think about if you're 20 pounds overweight and you're carrying that with the, the same activity, then you add that additional 20 pounds times six into that entire equation. Wow, maybe I better hold off on the nachos. But seriously, it's good to know our blues have a team of experts standing by to make repairs on their knees and everybody else's. As an orthopedic surgeon, I don't save lives, I save lifestyles. And patients who come to us with various knee injuries, we want to get them back on the field or on the court or on the ice in order to resume the lifestyle that they had prior to their injury. Now we're all in the know about knees. And that's the science of St. Louis Blues hockey. Check out our other episodes and learn more about the science of St. Louis Blues hockey. Go to barnesjewish.org slash science of blues hockey.